Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Mikey and today we're going to be talking about how to get into McMaster University for medical school. Now McMaster is a special school because it is actually a three year instead of a four year program. One of my friends in research, Juana, is actually going to be the one helping me out with this video. We're both actually on the same research team at St. Michael's Hospital in the gastroenterology division. So if you guys do have any questions on how to get into McMaster University or even about research in general, feel free to leave it down below in the comment section for me and Juana to answer or reach out to us on Instagram. I will probably put our Instagram somewhere up here. Um, and if you guys do have any questions at all, really honestly, feel free to reach out to us. And also, if you're liking this series on Canadian medical schools, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel down below. So without any further ado, let's get started with this week's video. Hi, my name is Joanna, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience applying to the Michael G. DeGroote School of Medicine at McMaster University. So to start, I am an incoming student, meaning that I have not started any classes yet. However, I will be starting in the fall. Prior to medical school, I studied at Queen's University, earning my Bachelor's of Science Honors, studying life science. So a little bit about the medical school itself. It does offer a three-year program, which sets it apart from the other medical schools in Ontario, which offer four-year programs. Additionally, it does have a heavy emphasis on problem-based learning. So now let's talk about interviews. So the McMaster interview format is the MMI format. And while I can't talk about the specifics of my McMaster interview, I can speak generally and briefly about the actual MMI format and how I prepared for MMIs in general. So starting with the MMI format, the MMI consists of a number of stations. I believe the number usually ranges from six to 10 stations. And at each station, you're presented with some type of situation, scenario, or prompt. You have about two minutes to read the situation or prompt and start formulating an answer. You then enter the room, present your answer, and you may or may not be asked follow-up questions. Moving on to how I prepared for MMIs in general, one thing that I did was I made sure to practice with friends. I found that practicing with friends made me more comfortable talking in front of other people and it also allowed me to gain valuable feedback. Additionally, I also got to learn about some perspectives that I might not have initially thought about. I also made an effort to practice with strangers occasionally as well. Ultimately on interview day, those that are interviewing you are strangers and they're not friendly, familiar faces. So I want to become more comfortable with the idea of live interviews as well. Additionally, I did brush up on some current events. However, I didn't want to treat my MMIs or any of my interviews as an exam. Therefore, I didn't spend tons of time memorizing statistics. In fact, I even worked on worst case scenarios where I was presented with a topic that I was not familiar with during some practice MMIs and I had to work my way step by step and rationally through these unfamiliar topics. I found that by practicing these worst case scenarios, I was able to practice moving on from some seemingly bad stations as well. The last thing I did to try to prepare for MMIs was to mimic the actual interview circumstances. So if it was a virtual MMI or interview, I would make sure to practice recording myself giving answers to questions or situations so that I'd be used to hearing the sound of just my voice alone for a long period of time. Additionally, for MMIs, they do range in duration, so I would practice based off of the duration of the MMI, so that I would have the endurance for actual interview day to complete the interview without feeling fatigued at the end. Moving on to tuition. So tuition for my first year at Mac will be around $25,000. So moving on to how you apply to the School of Medicine at McMaster University, you do have to submit an OMSAS application. On OMSAS or on this application, you can request your transcripts, you can send out um, reference forms for your uh, references to complete, you can fill out your ABS, etc. McMaster ultimately does only really care about your GPA as well as your MCAT card score. In addition to the GPA and your MCAT CAR score, um, and separate from the OMSAS application, you do have to complete a CASPER test. The CASPER test is a situational judgment test, I believe, um, where you're presented with different scenarios, either videos or written scenarios, and you have about five minutes to answer three questions for each scenario or each station. 
Okay, let's talk about some academics. So when I applied this past application cycle, I applied with a cumulative GPA of a 4.29 on a 4.3 scale. Um, but my OMSAS GPA was a 4.0. In terms of my MCAT score, I had a 519 with a 129 in the car section and 130 in the remaining three sections. Let's talk about research. So um, I did have research experience prior to applying. I believe I had about two years of experience at that point, two or three years. Um, I did have one publication as a second author. Um, this past application cycle, as well as a poster presentation for a conference. Outside of research, some other extracurriculars that I participated in included things that I felt really passionate about and things that I really enjoyed spending my time on. Some of my more long-term commitments included my school's HOSA chapter, where I served um, as the vice president, president, and co-president. Additionally, I was also a volunteer at my school's peer support center, and then I also worked there as a supervisor the following year. Um, and finally, I was a member of my school's dance club starting in first year all the way through to graduation. Some other activities that I was involved in included Best Buddies, um, QSurge, which is our undergraduate science journal. Um, I was also a TA for a semester. And finally, I participated in intramurals every year for Ultimate Frisbee. Now let's talk about some tips for getting into medical school. What do you think the algorithm for acceptance is for your medical school? So McMaster actually makes this information quite clear on its website. Um, ultimately, if you want the most accurate and up-to-date information about applying to any medical school, make sure you check out official resources released by that medical school. Um, for McMaster, I believe that the breakdown pre-interview wise is 32% GPA, 32% MCAT cars, and 32% CASPER score. Therefore, the CASPER test is quite important for your pre-interview score, so do not uh, take it too lightly. Additionally, I believe that if you have a graduate degree that they do that that does count for some bonus percentages too. Once you've received an interview, the way they determine admissions is 15% for your GPA, 15% for your MCAT CAR score, and finally 70% for your MMI interview score. Okay, last but not least, what tips do you have for students applying to medical school? So generally speaking, my tips for those applying to medical school would be to show off your personality at least a little bit in your interviews. While we do feel pressured to present the most professional version of ourselves and the most put together version of ourselves to our interviewers, I think that by Allowing your personality to seep in at least a little bit does make the whole experience a lot more fun and it does allow interviewers, at least in my opinion, um, to get a better sense of what you're like as a person. Additionally, I also think it's important to reflect on your experiences early and reflect on why you picked medicine early. Ultimately, these questions or these reflections uh, could really help you when you have to start writing essays for the different medical schools or they could even help you answer some interview questions down the line. Last but not least, don't feel as if there is only one route to get to medical school. I have friends who did not do any research and were successful when they applied to medical school. Um, I had friends that did not participate in any of the more traditional extracurricular activities and they were successful as well. Ultimately, there is no one path to get to medical school. Do what you enjoy, um, be able to talk about it, and I think that you'll still be fine regardless. That's it for me today, but thank you so much for having me and best of luck with your med school applications.